Hi, welcome to my channel. So today, in today's journal, I will show you how we moved our bees recently from one location to another one. Now the reason we did this was because the farmer whose land we had the bees on was going to bring some cows in to his farm. So he just needed some space to get those cows acquainted and he was also going to build a fence around our apiary so that the cows don't, you know, just get curious and start scratching against the hives because it is common occurrence that they bump them over and the hives fall. So here we are wearing a full bee suit. This includes very thick fabric, which the bees can't stink through. Also, a veil, which will stop the bees from stinging our face, and protective thick goatskin gloves. This is also to stop the bees from stinging us. As you can see, I also use construction boots because it's usually pretty muddy out in the field. When you're moving a beehive, you always want to make sure you get out there before the sun comes out or when it's still chilly in the morning. The reason is because we don't want to leave anybody behind. So we want to get there before the bees start going out foraging for food. We remove the feeder jar and seal the top. We also use straps to secure the boxes together. Believe me when I say you don't want bees flying around in your car. Why? Because first of all, they might start stinging you if they get nervous. And the other is you're just going to want to open the window and let them out. But then that means that they will probably never find their home again. So what we do is we use an entrance reducer on the closed position seal up the hive with some duct tape, and make sure all the bees are safe inside the hive. Make sure you have enough space in your vehicle to transport at least a couple of hives, a toolbox, a bucket, and your equipment. We are driving along the border between the United States and Canada in South Surrey. Now we're driving a bit further up north. Our new location is surrounded by agricultural land with crops such as blueberries, blackberries, cranberries, and raspberries. Mites are an invasive pest that create a lot of problems for a beehive. They affect the bees in their development stage. You can see how we clean this bottom board once a week. This serves as a way for us to measure how many mites are falling through the screen and onto the bottom board. This is a good way to gauge which kind and how much pest control you have to do throughout the year. Here, I'm cutting up a pollen patty. It's basically a protein supplement that we like to give the bees for them to feed to their larvae. This will usually last them for 10 or 15 days. And you can buy these patties or you can make your own. We just place the patty along the top of the frames for the bees to eat. This is a sugar water supplement that we like to feed the bees, especially towards the colder end of the year. We add sugar syrup, a little bit of honey, a little bit of lemon, and also Bee Pro Health, which is a dietary supplement. It aids in the bee's digestion. It has stuff like lemongrass oil, spearmint, peppermint oil. It smells really good. Believe me when I say everybody out there just wants to get in that bucket. Now I'm just flipping over the jar and waiting until it stops dripping. We'll put it inside the box and the bees will begin eating it. This will last for about 10 days. Since we're placing the bees out on an open field, we definitely want to protect them from any invaders. So we're going to place this wire along the entrance of the hive to protect from rodents such as mice and rats. 
and also things like wasps or raccoons that might want to come into the hive and rob the honey. So one of the things I like the most about transporting bees is when these bees come out, when the day gets a little bit warmer and they realize they're in a new spot, they're going to start doing orientation flights. What that means is basically half of the colony, or usually the foraging bees, are going to congregate above the hive. They're just going to start flying in circles. And bees actually use the Earth's magnetic field and the sun for orientation. So it's going to take them a few hours to just orient themselves and try to figure out where they are. So that's always a pretty cool sight to catch. So thank you so much for watching my video. Now this is only the first of many journals to come. I will be documenting my journey with beekeeping. Uh, now I'm using some footage that I already have from the past year. But definitely stay tuned because in the spring we have a lot of exciting things coming up. And I just hope that you like the video. Please write me if you have any questions. Give us a thumbs up, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.